Hey guys, my name is Victoria. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm filming my April wrap up. Yay! I hope you had a great start into this new month and May is one of my favorite months and I'm so excited for all the books I'm going to read this month, but Today we'll focus on the past. In total I read 11 books, although I think six of them I listened to as audiobooks because this month, the last month has been very stressful or I was in a reading slump and it was really hard to get out. So audiobooks was a great way to get through that. Let's get right into the books because the first book I read is the first audiobook I'm going to present to you today, which is Boyfriend Material by, I have to look up the author, by Alexis Hall. This is the story of Luke and Oliver and Luke is the son of a rock star and said rock star never really cared about him so his father was never in the picture and he and his mom have a really great relationship and he has a pretty shitty job but he really wants to keep it in order to keep it he has to stay out of scandals because obviously because his dad is a famous public person there is bound to be some drama in Luke's life just because he's the son of a famous person. So his boss basically told him, you need to give the public a good image of you in order not to be portrayed as a man. And he's freaking out. He's like, I can't lose my job. I need to afford things and I, I need money. So what the hell do I do? And then his friend has the great idea to set him up with Oliver. And they sort of make this pact of fake dating. The book is called Boyfriend Material and the trope is fake dating. So I think you get what I'm saying here. They sort of start fake dating and then it becomes something more and drama is sure to ensue. And honestly, I thought it was just a normal romance. I know the, f the fake dating pretend game. I I've known it for a long time now through fanfiction, but I gotta say the ending was still so <laughs> emotional and so infuriating sometimes because I thought, what the hell, guys? What is happening? Um, it did have the ending I was hoping for. So yeah, it's a, it's pretty predictable. And I don't think that you find anything that's not predictable in such novels, but it was good. I liked the book a lot and I loved Luke and Oliver. I loved their characters so much. I just loved their banter. Their banter was so great sometimes. I gave this book a four out of five. It wasn't anything that blew my mind away, but it was cute. And again, the end was like, okay, I didn't expect that to happen. Okay, I hope they said everything for this book. The next book that I read was also an audiobook, and it was Double Indemnity by James M. Kane. I saw this in one of Noelle Gallagher's videos, and she said that it was great. It was pretty short, so I was like, okay, let's listen to it. And it's about a guy who plans to murder his girlfriend's husband. Forget what I'm saying. They have an affair. And they want to be together, but they can't because of said husband. And he's like, okay, let's get him out of the picture. Yeah, not the approach that I would choose. And it definitely had something to do with money. It's a book about planning the perfect murder. And the first half of the book is only focused on that. And the second half focuses on how they deal with this now and how the relationships in this book change because they change dramatically, which was one of the reasons why I gave this book a three out of five. The beginning was really slow. It was hard for me to get into. And I gotta say, I didn't really like any of the characters. The protagonist is called Walter and his affair is called Phyllis. And I was hoping obviously for Walter to have a good ending and that everything works out, which is really weird. Like you have sympathy for a murderer, which I personally found really interesting. It had plot twists that I didn't expect. I think I would give this a four out of five. I don't know why I gave this a three out of five. I would give this a four out of five. It was great and it was short, so I would recommend it. It's really fun. It's sort of being a detective, but from the murderer perspective. You get what I'm saying? Like you're trying to find out how to commit the perfect murder. The next book I actually physically read and it's The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. I can't tell you how much I love this book and how much I look forward to reading it again. Everyone said it was so good and I had high expectations, I had high hopes for it. But dude, it really was this good. It's, I gotta say, I think it's one of my favorite books of all time now. I can't get over Oscar Wilde's writing. I can't get over it. His writing is so beautiful. I did not annotate this copy because it's actually my sister's copy, but look at how beautiful this copy is. It's gorgeous. I do plan on getting my own just so I can, when I read it, annotate things and make notes and stuff. My sister hates when uh, people write in their books, so I didn't want to do that to her copy, but... <sighs> I've never read such good writing and 
yeah, I haven't really read a lot in my life, but I can't wait to read my next Oscar Wilde novel. This is the story of Dorian Gray and his portrait being made or his picture being painted by Basil Hallward, an artist who is sort of, I think, infatuated with Dorian Gray. He adores him, he found his muse in him. And if you love art, like me, and if you love poetic writing, this is perfect for you. In general, it's the story of how Dorian wants to keep his vanity and he wants to make sure that he stays beautiful and gorgeous as he is described. He's always described as this beautiful, handsome man, the fairest of them all. <laughs> <laughs> in a way and he wants to make sure that he keeps it. <clears throat> He's able to do that It has a supernatural element in it because you see through time that the picture that was painted kind of changes But Dorian doesn't. There's so much drama. There's love. There's toxic friendships Lord Henry is a big character in this book and I have a love and hate relationship with him because he motivates Dorian to really live and just do whatever he wants, but I also think that he's partially responsible for Dorian's in the end demise. I'm not gonna say anything, but the ending was so good. I think it was one of the best endings I've ever read. I watched the movie and God did I hate it. I love Ben Barnes and I love Colin Firth, but it was so bad. I was so sad because the atmosphere that I felt while reading this book was nothing like the atmosphere that was portrayed, that was shown in the movie. It was darker, and yes, this this book is a dark book, don't get me wrong, but in no, no. I know some people love the movie, but if you read the book, then you know that this is 100% better. So yeah, the picture of Dorian Gray, I gave this, what can I say, a 5 out of 5. It was amazing, and... Ah! I'm gonna read you the first sentence just to show you how Oscar Wilde writes. I cannot do it justice with my reading voice anyways. Chapter 1. The studio was filled with the rich odor of roses, and when the light summer wind stirred amidst the trees of the garden, there came through the window door the heavy scent of the lilac or the more delicate perfume of the pink flowering thorn. I love poetry so much and his writing is so much like poetry. The fourth book that I read was also an audiobook, which is called Maybe One Day by Debbie Johnson. I saw this on Goodreads and I wanted to read it, but then I saw that it was on my app on BookBeat and I was like, okay, let's listen to it. Maybe One Day is the story of Jess and how she finds letters of her long lost love, Joe, when she cleans out her mom's attic. Her mother recently passed away and she's in the house and finds this box of letters. Upon finding this box, she is shocked because she didn't even know these letters existed. You get a lot of background information or at least information about the past in this book, which I really liked because a tragedy happened in Jess and Joe's life. And I'm not gonna spoil anything, but it was so severe that their paths never crossed again until Jess finds these letters and decides that she wants to find him. And then she goes on a road trip throughout the entire country and goes to America. It's very heavily loaded with guilt and heartbreak and love and loss and grief. And then there's characters obviously who balance the story out right and that's what I really loved. Like you have these heavy topics but you also have comic relief through flashbacks and funny stories, especially through Jess's cousin, Michael. You only know what Jess knows and you obviously hope that she finds Joe, but I'm not gonna spoil anything. I gave this book a four out of five. I really enjoyed listening to it. I thought the audiobook was great. If you wanna go on a journey with Jess to find a lost love, that's something that you might wanna read. The next book I read is one I showed you in my book haul. If you haven't seen that, link is in my bio or click the eye. It's Clara and Dizona or Clara and the Sun by Kazuo Ishiguro. This was my first Ishiguro novel. That's exactly what I said in my book haul. And I read this for the book club of Julie, my friend. Clara and the Sun is a dystopian novel, which is about artificial intelligence serving as friends for teenagers. So you have these robotic, artificial intelligences who look exactly like people and they are sold to be friends with real teenagers and again you know just like every dystopia you question yourself which you have an AF like artificial friend that's what they called and do you think this is a good friendship that Clara has because Clara is bought by a family and then is the friend to Josie Josie who is a teenager who faces a challenge 
I'm not gonna say too much, I don't want to spoil anything. There's a lot of questions, that's what I can say. I had lots of questions after reading this book, I was like, okay, but what was that about and what happened then and what happened to Josie and what happened to Clara in the end? I don't know if it was because I read it in German, because I tend to get a little less interested in the story or a little less interested in the language if it's German, just because I don't know why, but it was pretty boring. Nothing really happened, and when things happened, they were not really interesting. Yes, obviously the questions that you ask after reading this book are interesting, and the way that you can talk to people about this book, that's something totally different, because you can talk hours about this book. When you solely read it for enjoyment, yeah, it was hard to get through, and after reading this, I found myself a little bit in a reading slump. I was like, uh, okay, I'm done with that. I don't want to read. <laughs> Luckily, I got out of that. But yeah, I gave this book a 2 out of 5. Because I liked Clara as the protagonist. I liked her, but mm, too many questions unanswered. I think that's what the author wanted, but it was not my cup of tea. Also, I'm not the biggest fan of such dystopias, like artificial intelligence. That's something I'm just not really interested in. It's very very, very cool for discussion, and it's great in, for example, in class, but yeah, I'm not really interested in it. So yeah, Clara and the Sun. The next book I read is one that I listened to, it's also an audiobook. I read The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho, I hope I'm saying this right, probably not. This is a very popular book, I think a lot of people read it, and I'm glad that I read it, because I thought it was, it was really good. I wouldn't really call it phenomenal. I thought the beginning was pretty phenomenal. It starts with this um, retelling of the tale of Narcissus and it introduces a different perspective on the story and I thought that was brilliantly done and I loved it. I would have loved to read this book in class. There was so much that I can grasp upon because I didn't have the time to really get through. I also want to have the physical copy and then reread it and then annotate it, answer some questions that I have or just find out all the meanings that the author put in this, because I believe that that was the intention of the author. And the story is about a shepherd boy named Santiago, and he dreams two times that he's supposed to find a treasure in his life. He meets a lot of people that tell him to go for it, that say, if you dreamed that more than once, then that's a sign, that's a symbol, that's an omen, so you need to go for it. And the story is a lot about chasing your dreams, not giving up, even though people are saying it's um, stupid or people are saying it's not true and nothing will ever come of it, but he goes on this journey and meets so many people, so many interesting individuals, and also the alchemist who this book is um, titled with, and it was so interesting. The audiobook was really short, it was four hours, so I was able to finish this, I think, in, in, in a day. I, I love the story, I love the characters. I gave this book a four out of five, and I do believe that I could give it a five out of five after reading it with a physical copy, because then I could actually mark things and annotate things and then make sure that I value every single word. That was that, that was The Alchemist. I really like this book, I'm really glad I listened to it. Next book I read is actually one that I read as a physical copy, which is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. I read this for the same book club by Julie, and we're gonna discuss it tomorrow, and this is a story of how do you summarize this book. Okay, I'm gonna try. This is the story of a circus being created in order to, in the end, set a jewel of two very powerful magicians. They don't call themselves magicians though. There was so much in this book, so many perspectives, so many timelines. It's set at the end of the 19th century. The Night Circus is not a normal circus. It was made by a little group of people who had this idea who wanted to do this, and then multiple tents are created, and there's magic that the people that visit the Night Circus, which obviously, Night Circus, it only is open at night, they believe that it's simple magic, that, that it's all just tricks, and um, that's not real magic, but the reader and the people inside the circus know better. It's very supernatural, very fantastical. Um, the story itself, yes, it was poetic because the night circus is only black and white and that's sort of an analogy or an allusion to a chess game, like bad versus good, light versus dark. I really like this and I think you can explain it in a very poetical way or you can simply find so much meaning in the little things. 
I believe that's what the author has done very brilliantly, that she made sure that everything that she made in the circus and in the characters has such a deep meaning that, that I can't even find on my own. If I had like a month with this book, I still find something at the end, I believe, because this was kind of a big thing. But there's so much in this, and that was sometimes really confusing. I was like, who is talking now? I got mixed up with the characters at, at times. In the end, it was better because you spent more time with the characters. I got mixed up so much with the timeline, I didn't know where we were. That was a little bit exhausting. I gave this book a three out of five. I liked some of the characters. I'm not gonna say who now because I don't wanna spoil anything, but it was so long, but that's the night circus. That's what I have for you <laughs> about that. The next book I finished was an audiobook, and I read They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera. <sighs> I've seen this book so many times in the bookshop. I've seen this book being read by so many people, and I thought, okay, I saw this on BookBeat. Let's listen to it. This is the story of a world where people get a call by an organization or just, I don't even know how to call it, and they get told that they're gonna die that day, today. We follow the story of Matteo and Rufus, and they both get the call on the same day, and there's this app called Last Friend, and it's an app for especially deckers, that's a term for the people that will die that certain day, um, for them to meet either other deckers or people who are not going to die that day and not spend the time that they still have alone. And uh, Rufus and Matteo match and they meet up and then they start to live their last day on earth. Yeah, knowing that they're going to die that day is really, it was really hard, especially because they form a very strong bond. I'm not gonna spoil too much, but knowing that they could have had a great life together, but they couldn't have it is really hard. I gave this book a four out of five. So yeah, I liked this book. It was heartbreaking. The next book is the last audiobook I listened to, uh, which is called I Hate Men by Pauline Arm Armange. Arm I think it's a French author. That's why I can't say it because I don't speak French. This is the author's perspective on misandry and misogyny and feminism and sexism and how things are not equal. I listened to this, it was only an hour long, that's why I listened to it, and I also thought, okay, when you have a book that's titled I Hate Men, will I find it a great source for women and men and anyone else who wants to educate themselves on the topic? And I don't think I would choose this one. The author brought up a lot of good points, a lot of things that we sadly already know. So many people always criticize a lot of literature and books, whatever, media that tackles this topic because uh, they think it's not really equal. Like when you say men rape women, you also have to say that, oh, by the way, women also rape men or women also rape. Kind of have to find the balance between these two. And the author says that you actually can't really do that and that some women are being accused of men haters and um, that they're misandrists. And I gave this book a three out of five because I don't think it's the right approach. Um, I think it was also more dedicated or more targeted towards women because at the end she's talking about sisterhood. She also talks about um, girls being early on indoctrinated to have relationships. They're always asked, do you have a boyfriend? And when they say, no, I don't, they say, oh, you have time. And then when they get older, they're like, well, when are you going to get married? When are you going to have kids? And men are not asked these questions. And for me, it was nothing new. The book didn't say anything new, really, except for that everyone, girls and boys, grew up with this internalized subconscious sexism and um, misogyny. No man will go into a bookshop and say, I wanna educate myself on this topic and read a book that's called I Hate Men. It's not so much to say. Again, I think it's more targeted towards women. Do I think it was well approached? No. Do I think it was well discussed? No. There, I think that there's truth through the author's words. Absolutely. Yes, and I gave this book a 3 out of 5 because I think the approach was not well done. The second to last book I read this month was Film For Her. This is a poetry and photography prose collection of Orion Colado. I read her first poetry collection, Flux, I think in October or November, and I was pleasantly surprised that it wasn't uh, like pretentious or that it wasn't actually that bad. Um, because I do like how she writes. This was a little bit um, different. This is a beautiful book. A beautiful, aesthetically pleasing book. Look at this color. Oh my god, I love green so much. Um, I'm gonna browse through it so you can kind of see. 
So you have like handwritten notes. I love, I love the design. It's a great coffee table book. And then you have like her pictures. And I do like the pictures that she makes. And there were some really great sayings that I deeply enjoyed. I thought her first poetry collection was a little bit stronger because I just like the topics more that she talked about. But this was, this wasn't bad. Uh, I'm gonna read you a little bit because I really like this. It's called Nocturne Number no. 8 and the picture next to it is a beautiful piano and I'm gonna read it. The voices I named sing a lot softer these days. Their symphonies harvest the light just enough to watch flowers bloom from their gums. A symphony coil inside, vulnerable, wandering. Voices turn to piano keys, fertile to this melancholic rhythm. I close my eyes just enough to let go of the suffering and allow myself this moment to feel everything. I liked the, the metaphor of the piano keys and the melodies and the music. She has a beautiful way of writing and it felt more like a diary, which is not bad. But it's not something that I was really able to identify with, which I always try to find in poetry, but poetry is always personal. It's really a story that she tells and you are merged into her life. And that was something I really liked. With the pictures, it was, it was a beautiful atmosphere. I gave this book a three out of five because it was beautiful, but I expected a little bit more, especially because I found that her first poetry collection was stronger than other poetry collections published by people who claim to be great poets. Definitely not. The last book I finally finished yesterday. I started it at the beginning of April and I only just now finished it. It's Get a Life, Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. This is about the eldest of the Brown sisters, Chloe, and she suffers with chronic pain, which you, <laughs> which you really empathize with in this book. I felt that she was such a strong woman and it's a romance because there is this guy called Red or Redford and um, in the beginning it seems like they don't like each other very much but they actually just attracted to one another. The characters were really great. I, I fully enjoyed Chloe as a character. I loved Red. These books are very sweet, very romantic but also very steamy. So if, if that's not your thing you should not read this book or the others because I know the others are just as steamy as this one. I really did not like and this book was great, actually. I really enjoyed it. But what I really did not like was the conflict at the end. Because the author wrote something that would make the ending more interesting. I thought that's so unnecessary. Uh, so I'm not going to say too much. I laughed out loud while reading this book. <laughs> it was so much. Uh, just the expressions. The author writes with so much honesty and, and it's so raw. And it's so funny at times. I really enjoyed the characters. But what I didn't like was the conflict at the end. And that's why I give this book a four out of five. And we're finally done. We're done with this month. I'm so excited for the next month. And I was really glad that I had the audiobooks this month. Okay, this was it. I hope you liked it. Please let me know what you read this month and what was your highlight. By the way, yeah, I do a thing now, which I tell you what book was my highlight at the end of the month. And to no one's surprise, it's a picture of Dorian Gray of Oscar Wilde. I recommend this to anyone. Yeah, I hope you liked this video and if you did, please give me a thumbs up, comment down below what you would like to see next, what I can improve and give me book recommendations as always. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, then please do. I um, just hit 300 subscribers and I can't believe it. I really want to thank you guys. Thank you so much for supporting me. Thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. I'm so happy I'm about anyone who's joining. And don't forget to click the little bell next to the subscription button. And my time is over, my camera is dying. So, I hope you have a great day and I hopefully see you in my next video. Bye guys. I actually wanted to film another video, but I really don't want to do it. Cleans out her mom's attic. Her mother recently passed away. Hey guys, my name is Victoria. Hey guys, my name is Victoria. Why can't I say that? Uh, um, to te that tell him to, if you, that tell, that say, if you, how do you say that? I wanna know. Ah. I need some energy. I'm gonna need some watermelon now.